fellow geeks, nerds, and fans of all shapes and sizes, this is the Mirror Sphere, your friendly neighborhood beer vet. I know, I gotta work on my intro. <laughs> Anybody that knows a better intro for me, wants to help me out, put in the comments or tweet me, we'll, we'll come up with something better. Anyways, excuse me, how is everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well, everybody out there. Today, I just wanna make a quick video about some, um, yeah, online MMOs that I play. A couple of them are free, so if you ever wanted to kind of delve into the world, they're pretty fun. Even if they're older, they're actually still pretty fun. Um, for uh, a couple of them are paid. You have to pay for subscription. Um, let's start off with my no, my main game. The main game that I love is Final Fantasy XIV Online. Now, my first MMO I ever played was Final Fantasy XI. I loved that game. And I played for a long time ago when it was like first came out. So I was doing the Dune yells for hours, you know, looking for party, and you know, that was hardcore MMOs back then. You, you know, people say WoW was hardcore, 14 was hardcore. Holy crap. <laughs> Oh my god. Or no, it's not like Final 14, but 11 was hardcore. God, that game was incredibly difficult. And you had, uh, I remember like hunting this ghost in one of the lands, and he only came out like one hour a day. And like 10 people would be like, no, he wouldn't, he'd only show up once. He'd only spawn once, and but he can only, he could spawn between this time and this time in a day. Some people would just spend hours hoping to get it because it would drop a, a, a special item that would sell for tons of gold or gill or whatever it was back then. It's been a long time since I played that game. But 14, 14 started off really not very good. 1.0, I did play. I got to about level 20, I think, on a character and I just couldn't go on. I just couldn't do it. I it just. It was so repetitive and it was so boring. I, it just burned me out like that. A lot of people liked it. I, I couldn't do it, man. You stand, you go to a crystal, you get the same quest from this crystal, and you would grind out this quest line, you know, five, ten qu you know, quests, and then you'd have to wait till they, re you know, you got more quests, and then do it again and again. And it's just like, oh my god. Well, you just fight monsters all day I'm trying to level. I couldn't do it like that. I just, mm mm. So I left, and then it went down, and I came back with 2.0. I mean, I think, yeah, I got right into it pretty much right after I heard it got re re revamped, and I loved it. I got, <laughs> I got to a level 50 warrior, and then I realized I was on a Japanese server and I couldn't understand anything. Like at the beginning, it wasn't too bad. Leveling up, I kind of did solo. You would do John Dunes, but when he got the end game, when you did do raiding and stuff, I couldn't do it because I couldn't understand what anybody was saying. Because everybody was speaking Japanese, especially over the headsets, and I couldn't understand a thing. So I, had to, I just pretty much I deleted that character and I started over. And I was playing forever. I would, I, you know, it's a game where you, you can, you pay so much a month. What I would do is I would buy three or six months, you know, periods. And then I would play for those three or six months, and then I pretty much got burnt out, or I got the end game, and I had nothing else to do. There's so much to do in this game. Final Fantasy XIV. If you're new, do it. Yes, the 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 2.0. When you get to level 50, there is a massive area, which is a, it's it's there's a, a point where it has a quest line that just kind of seems pointless, but it wasn't at the time. So it does kind of suck to get through, but when you get through it and you get to Heaven's Ward, the expansion, the story blows up. I'm a story guy. I love games with a good story. And 14 is pure gold. You will enjoy it. The classes are almost all fun to play. I'm not a healer, so I never leveled any of the healing. Uh, I usually go f between Dragoon, uh, Monk is usually my number one guy. Monk is usually who I end up playing no matter what. Even when they release new jobs, I'm like, yeah, I love Samurai, and I would play Samurai for a while, and then eventually I just end up being a Monk again. 
So I was a massive monk player. Uh, then I leveled my dragoon. That was what I was playing the last time I was doing. I was in game as a dragoon because dragoon actually is pretty fun and it's got a very strong rotation. Monk was god tier. Samurai is really strong, uh, but it just got really kind of repetitive. It, Samurai is a very repetitive job in that game. You just you pretty much you hit the same kind of things over and over and over, so you get the the whatever the three builds, and then you unleash your most powerful attack. And it just does that over and over, which is fine. And it's a strong class. And I love the samurai quest line. It was really fun. And I love the aesthetic. Um, Dragoon's really fun. The quest line that is actually cool. And it really delves into the whole dragon horde thing. Um, Monk, though, is one of my favorite classes ever. And this, the beginning story is pretty funny, too. Then uh, you know, my tanks. Um, if I would... If I would rate my tank, my favorite tank would probably be Paladin because Paladin's actually really OP. Uh, but I love Gunbreaker. I really do. I love that job and I love the. So I have a level 80. I have tons of level 80s. Let's see. I have a level 80 uh, Gunbreaker. I think I have like a level 78 Paladin right now. The last time I played, I was leveling a Paladin and a couple others. So I kind of level up tanks all at the same time, pretty much, so I can keep the same gear, so I don't have to constantly have to go to dungeons and get gear again. So I think I did all my melee DPS. I did Dragoon, Samurai, Monk, to level 80. Uh, let's see, what else did I get to level 80? Um, trying to think, sorry. I had everything almost to 70 until, you know, Shadow Breakers came out. Oh, I can't remember. It's been so long. Um, Machinist I was working on because they did improve Machinist. Bard I was also working on. Dark Knight is still level like 72 I believe. My Warrior is still level 70. Um, summoner. I think I did. did my, no, my Summoner is level 72 I believe. The summoner got really complicated for me. <laughs> like I love Summoner and um, I, I was one of my main uh, jobs when I was playing uh, Stormblood, but then you know they came out with the Phoenix, and I, I just I I will Summoner needs a major redo. I think if it's up to me, I would I get rid of the small little summons, and I would have it where you build up a gauge and you summon the big guy, and the big guy just for like a couple of minutes just pounds on the target, like actual Ifrit or an actual you know Shiva and. You know, Instead, you get the little fucking dude, which is fine, but it's just. Mm. And you some Bahamut. You got big Bahamut. The whole reason they didn't do the big ones because they were afraid that it would block the screen. Eleven did a good job with summonings. I really did like Eleven summonings where you would just you'd summon the big guy, and then you'd rest, and he would just fucking just boom, and then they would go away, and then you would help support, and then you would some as soon as he could, you'd summon the next big guy. That was fun. Um, okay, but um, anyways, back to the story. Heaven, Heaven Sword was really good. Uh, that was really good the expansion. It is the whole uh, Dragon Song War was really interesting. You get through that, and you get the Stormblood. Uh, Stormblood was not as good as Heaven Sword. A lot of people think you know don't. It was it was good. You have an interesting bad guy in there. It's kind of creepy. It reminds me of Sephiroth almost, uh, in a way. Um, but it's not as good as I have. So it just does, it didn't do what a lot of people thought it would do. And then Shadowbringers dropped. And holy crap. If you, you know, like if you know, a lot of WoW players aren't liking the newer expansions because they're just not going the way the fans wanted it to. Which is fine, but Shadow 14 Shadowbringers was pure gold. The story is so deep and so good, and oh my god, it was so much fun to play through. Each of the lands are really crazy and cool. You got like a fairy land that's really fun to play. You got all kinds of stuff. And you know, the only problem I ever had in 14 is you never become the actual bad guy. Like in Shadowbringers, they teased that, you know, you would become the, the warrior of darkness. And I thought you were going to become, like, the enemy of the people. Like, they were going to hate you. 
and he didn't, and I was kind of, I was like, oh damn it. <laughs> it's because I would, I would love if they, if they had like, you go to a shard, and instead of being, you know, the good guy, you're seen as like the demon lord or something like that, the, you know, the dark lord, and you would help the beast tribes, like you know, the ones that, who are actually like, this, that would be interesting. That'd be really cool if they did that in 14. Like they do, like the next expansion or something, you go to another shard, and instead of being like a hero but called the Dark Warrior Darkness, you're actually like feared. Like there's a couple cities, but they're like oppressing, but they're like kind of not good, you know, whatever. And the Beastmen are, you have to go help the Beastmen rise up in power, to, you know, stop the cities from destroying everything. That'd be cool. And become like a demon lord or something. That'd be awesome. Oh my god, that'd be cool. Oh, but yeah. Anyways, 14 is definitely my favorite of all the MMOs I've ever played. I played WoW. I played... WoW got really repetitive because you, you get one class, one job pretty much. And you go through it and you beat it and then you get to the end game and then you're like, oh, I want to try this other one. 14 is great to do this because you don't have to make a new character. So you don't have to go through the story oh, every single time over and over and over. You make one character and you have all access to all the jobs. You just switch. And all you do is switch weapons. And there's a little tab that you can save gear sets. And you got a lot of them, trust me. The crafting in 14 is fantastic. You know, I got all my gathering up to I think 70 something. I think all my gatherers are up past 70. So I got it. When I, if I, I'm going to probably get on here probably the next big patch before the expansion comes out. I think the last big patch they do and then you know before the wait for the expansion I'll probably get back on. Because I, I think I stopped in like January I think is when I stopped playing. So it was like right before the last patch. Because <coughs> no. um, I just got warm. MMOs have a have a thing where they're a lot of fun. They take a lot of hours. And in some ways, you save a lot more money playing MMOs than you would if you were just playing different games. Because, you know, games, you keep buying games. You're like, oh, I beat that game. That was fun. And you buy another game. And you buy another game. You know, MMOs, if you're, especially if you're new, you buy the full game and you pay per month. Let's say you throw in 60 bucks like I had to do for like six months. And then you just play straight up six months. And you never buy another game. Because that's, you go home, you play 14. <laughs> Like that was my, you know, my thing. But at the time, I was working e uh, evening shifts, so I had a lot of hard time doing in-game stuff, like hardcore raids, because I could never hook up with anybody. So I usually just soloed. I had a guild, and then that guild kind of fell apart, and my brother joined the game, and so I helped him get to in-game. And then he hit one of his friends on another server, so we joined another server, and I transferred, which. I kind of regret now because then he quit the game and then I was stuck with a bunch of his friends that I didn't know and then they kind of just, I wasn't really part of that group. Which is kind of, it's if you can get a good guild in 14 with a good people, it's fucking awesome. I was trying to make a guild, but we just never got it off the ground, which would be interesting. I never thought about trying to do that, is if a bunch of us from the fandom played 14. I know Az said he was just going to start doing it again. That's why I'm making this video now, because it, it kind of brought me back to that those times. All right, so uh, enough of 14. Uh, the other MMOs I do play right now is I kind of delve into a couple of the free to plays. Um, Lord of the Rings Online, if you don't know, that's an older MMO, but it's good. It's free to play. You can, they do have some limitations, like you can sub. Or you can just purchase you know, these little coins and unlock some stuff. But it's absolutely free to download, free to play. You don't need to. A lot of the classes that are free are really good. Um, I never got to end game on Lord of the Rings Online. I barely even scratched the beginning of it. Because I keep, I play for a while, but then I kind of like, I only get two characters for free. So I kind of like, oh, I want to try a different class. So I'll delete one of the characters that I kind of don't really like playing and then I'll start over. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sucks. I gotta stop doing that. But it's a fun. Lord of the Rings Online is it delves into you follow the story of 
the Lord of the Rings, but you're not like the main crew. You're helping out the fellowship. As the fellowship's going with the ring, you're helping on the sides. Like you're you're doing things to help make sure that they're not going to get attacked by this person or this person. And it, it's pretty good. I got to, I think the highest character I got was like level 30 though. So I got to definitely get into that game more. I would love to be able to stream, but I have a crappy little laptop. And if you haven't noticed, a lot of my gaming, gaming streams suck. I just I just noticed that. And that, that sucks. Because I was I, cause when I play on PlayStation, it shows I'm live. But it doesn't show I'm having any lag issues. So it uploads the video. And then I went and watched a couple of them. And it was like laggy as hell. And I am sorry for that. I don't know what I could do to improve it. This is my shitty internet. Yeah, because we we, we have AT&T internet and it sucks. But one day, when I get a new house and a full setup, I'm getting me a good fucking internet service so that I can do these streams without any problems. And I don't have to do all my videos on my phone. And I'll be able to do editing a lot better and you know stuff like that. Anyways. So let me get a drink. My favorite root beer. My task. Oh man. Anyways. Mm. I have it. Lord of Rings Online. It's really fun. You can play hobbits, you can play dwarves, you can play elves. They do you can unlock uh Bjorning, which is like the bear guys. Um, you can unlock uh, Warden is a pretty strong class. I haven't unlocked that one. I need to because I really want to play it. You got a sword, or not a sword, but a shield and a spear. Um, they have a bunch of them. Their healers are like uh, Minstrel, which is like a bard. But it's better bard. I, this is what I think is funny is in 14, the bard is more of an archer than an actual bard. You don't play as much music. But in and the, and Lord of the Rings, the minstrel, the bard, all you do is play songs, the heal to improve people, and it's a lot of fun. So if you ever want to just you know kill some time, I suggest get that game. If you like Lord of the Rings, it's an older game, so the graphics aren't like top fourteen level, but they're really it's a really fun game. And you you get to meet like Gandalf, you get to meet. Gimli, you get to meet, you know, all the cool characters, so if you just want to delve for free and have some fun, I suggest that one. Another one that I was playing that I kind of stopped playing is the Star Wars Online game. Um, I paid three months, member, or uh, sub to it. It wasn't much, it was like 20 bucks. And I played for like three months straight, and I got my Jedi Knight all the way up to the end, pretty much, of the game. Uh, it was fun. It really was. I beat the story at him. I was doing some that you can pick Empire, you can do it, you know, Jedi. And that game really delves really fun into the Star Wars universe. And if you ever want to have a good story with Star Wars and the EU, just pick it up. You know, it's free to download. It's mostly free to play. I, you can unlock. Uh, it's it's better if you have the sub because you get a lot of better stuff and you have access to all the expansions. You don't have to buy any expansions, so you'll be have you won't be. Just, and if you do go for free, you're still long. You have a very. It took me, I think, almost two months to get to the main story before I went to the expansions. So you got you got a lot of free stuff, a lot of time you can play. Um, uh, let me think. What other games do I play? Uh, Neverwinter. I kind of get in that game every once in a while. That game isn't as I don't know. It's one of those free to free online games that has a store and has all this stuff, and you can buy a lot of cosmetics and stuff. But it's I just don't understand that game as much as I wanted to. I love uh, R.A. Token or not R.A. Token. Sorry, R.A. Salvador. R.A. Salvador. R.A. Salvador. He's the writer who wrote the Drizzt series or Drizzt, whatever you want to call it, the Forgotten Realms books that. And this game is pretty much in that world. And I love those books so much. It's one of my f top favorite series. If you ever want to get good fantasy books, uh, look up Forgotten Realms, uh, 
the R.A. Salvador Drizzit or Dritzt. I always call him Drizzit, but he probably just called Dritz. I don't know. But it's about a dark elf and you know his his journeys, and it's really fucking good. Um, and it, it kind of delves in that world. It's a it's a Dungeons and Dragons style game, and it's it's fun. It's just I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> like it's got a quest line. It's pretty much linear. You keep going. It just it's an older game, and I just never really delve into it. I never really got into it. That's a game I would have to play with a lot of friends to really get into it. So if you do play that game, and if you ever want to hit me up, you know, say, hey, why don't you come with us? We'll help you get in the game. Do it. I have a Twitter. DM me any time of the day or comment here on YouTube. Uh, Neverwinter is a, it's pretty cool. I think I have an art or uh, a, um, a ranger. I only got two character slots in that too, so I got a ranger and like one other, but I'm not very far into the game. So if I want to start over, that's no big deal. Um, then we got, let's think, um, the final game I'll go over is ESO, Elder Scrolls, oh, oof, excuse me, Elder Scrolls Online. I decided to download that about a month ago, again. I play it on and off, because you know I do like the, the um, the Elder Scrolls series. This is not the same makers of Skyrim and stuff like that, so it's a lot different. And yeah, it's it has a different combat system. It, it it's different than the other MMOs I really play. Um, it's not too bad though. It, the story is pretty interesting. I do have a lot of problems with that game though. Uh, this is my honest opinion. I hate that they start you off at the, every time they come out with a big expansion, they start you brand new there. I understand why it is that you can join new friends. Like say you join with this expansion, instead of having to do all the other content before like 14 has to do, you just jump right in. But the only problem is that now you're not with the actual story of the game. You're like off. And I don't like, I like games where I am from point A to point F of the story. I want to start at the very beginning of whatever story it is and work my way through it. I do not like picking up books or movies or anything in the middle or even second book. Like I want to start at the very beginning. I want to, I want to be, I want to know what's going on. I want to know everything. And the problem with ESO is when you start like that, you start a new game, everything that's been going on the whole time is still there. Like that storyline is still happening. But now you're just like thrown into the middle of a story and it's like, what's going on? Who's this? Who's that? Who's that? And they don't explain anything because it's already, you had to go back and I don't even know how to go back. I, I wish they could just give you an option. Like, hey, do you want to start off with this expansion? Or do you want to start a game with the first, you know, the first thing and work your way up to the story? I think that would be the best way to do it because then I would have a lot more fun playing that game. Because then I would pick the, you know, the beginning and just work my way through. Um, that game you definitely want to be sub to because if you're not, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Because <laughs> that game, everything costs. They have a store. They have a lot of cosmetics, a lot of mounts, a lot of housing. You want a house, you gotta get it to the store. They give you a free one, but it's like tiny and it's shut. It sucks. Um, if you want a cooler house, you gotta go through the online store and get like these things, you know, so much money. And when you sub, you actually get a bunch of free coins and stuff to pay on the store, which is fine. Um, but then they got the expansions. There is. So so many because they have like main expansions and then they have story expansions if you're sub you get the story expansions for free so all the <laughs> the, the main things except for the main big expansions you have to actually buy the newest part of the game to get those big expansions and that sucks and then it's not cheap I looked at I tried to look calculate like the free to play and just trying to get enough coins to buy some of this oh my god it's horrible uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, so I subbed, I think I got like a month left, maybe, 
which kind of sucks because I barely played it. <laughs> I, I subbed for three months and then I played like a week and then I kind of was playing other things. So yeah. Um, so that's the last online game I was thinking of. Can't think of any more that I've been playing. I know there's some out there that you can get if you have Xbox or you're on a computer, but well, you know, it, okay. So you can get Neverwinter on PS5 or PS PlayStation or uh, I don't know about Xbox, but I know PlayStation and computer. I know you can get uh, 14 on a computer or PlayStation. I wish they would open up for Xbox because that would make the market even bigger and a lot more people will play Xbox. I know a lot of people play Xbox. Would love to do it. And they have crossplay. So you, you can play with people in 14 who are on computer when you're on PlayStation, which is great. I love that because I hate games that I'm like, I'm on the PlayStation, my computer can't handle shit, and then my brother plays an online game and I can get on there, but they don't do crossplay, so I never get to play with them. That sucks. Um Uh, uh, Lord of the Rings Online is only a computer, unfortunately, but it, my shitty laptop handles that game just fine. So if you have like a crappy computer like I do, it's still, it's not, it's not a strong, it's not, a, it takes almost no time at all to install. It's a lot of fun. So, you know, if you guys ever want to try to play that game with me, that'd be fucking awesome. I love Lord of the Rings, if you know, because I do a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff in this channel, and I, I want to keep delving into that world and that lore far more than I ever know now. I probably will start really getting into Lord of the Rings lore. Um, other than that, I think that's about all I got for you guys today. And so I'll talk to you guys next time, and stay safe. I know I said that a lot in my last video, but please stay safe. I'd hate to lose any of anybody from the fandom for, you know, stupid reasons. People come and go in our fandom, but I don't want to see anybody lose their life, period. I don't care from any anything. I don't want to see you guys, you know, you guys, this is our community and I really love being a part of it. And I know I'm a new YouTuber, but I've been around the fandom since... <sighs> Force Awakens, or no, not the Force Awakens, I'm sorry, yeah, the Force Awakens, when I first saw that movie, I was really lost at what the fuck was going on, so that's when I became a fan of the Phantom Menace, I, I think Journey for Geeks and Gamers is one of the first ones I met, um, God, there was a lot of you guys out there, I, I started following, cause, and then I really delved into like Gary and Doomcock and all those guys, I watch almost every stream, everybody in the Phantom, I'm trying to get all of you guys sub to, and you know, I hope you all sub to me soon. I know I only got like 26 or 27 by now, but every one of you count to me. No matter how many number or how big I get, every single person who's part of this fandom, I respect, I love you guys. Um, that's why I'm creating my book series, is because I want to give you guys something new. Not just for me, but for all of us. And I hope I'll see you guys out there. This is the Mirror Sphere, this is me. Daniel talking to you all and I can't wait to see you guys out there all right enjoy